Welcome back to the lab. After messing a bit with phosphorescent materials, I thought it would be fun to approach the same topic from another perspective, so I bought a bottle of neon gas and some glass tubes. Oh, and some Dumet wire since that's needed to make glass to metal seals. The goal for today will be to make a prototype light bulb, but I will not yet fill it with neon gas as my setup is not ready yet. The most basic fluorescent light bulb design I came up with is a T-shaped tube with two electrodes at the end and a port to make the vacuum. So that's what I'll try to make. As a first step, I blow a hole in the side of the larger tube. Then I heat both the large and small tube and join them to make the teeth. After that I heat the joint far from the flame to anneal it. For the electrode connection, I heat one end of the tube and pinch the lumet wire in between the molten glass. After that, more annealing is needed not to break the glass from cooling. I repeat the same operation for the other end of the tube. As you can see, it did came out as in my design, but this was not the first attempt. To see if it works, I'll connect it to a transformer and vacuum pump. If there are no significant leaks, when the air pressure gets low enough, it should light up.
Since vacuum and electricity may generate X-rays, I wanted to check that this wasn't the case with my Geiger counter. To my surprise, radiation reading doubled when the lamp was turned on. This was unexpected, as I thought far deeper vacuum and far higher voltages were needed. I checked the Geiger counter with an oscilloscope and found the problem. The electrical noise from the lamp transformer was tapping into the Geiger counter, artificially increasing the count. You can see the Geiger counter starts feeding high even before I apply the vacuum. Wrapping the Geiger counter in tin foil also resulted in typical background radiation readings when the lamp was turned on. So, no, in the end, my homemade lamp is not producing X-rays, and that's a good thing.